Hello, my name is Baruch and I'm an alcoholic. Welcome back to my series of Old Testament 12 step recovery videos where <clears throat> I'm going through the 12 steps for each of the five books of the Old Testament. Today we are on the 11th step based on inspiration from the book of Genesis. We're going to read Genesis 41 2 to Genesis 41 4. It's actually so three verses today instead of the usual one because I want to give you the full story here. You've probably heard this before, but it goes like this. And behold, there came up out of the river seven cows, well-favored and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the reed grass. And behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and they stood by the other cows on the brink of the river, and the ill-favored cows and lean-fleshed cows did eat up the seven well-favored and fat cows. Now, this is a famous verse in the Bible because it's describing a dream by, had by Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh dreamt that seven cows came out of the Nile, the Nile River in Egypt, which is considered one of the deities of the Egyptian kingdom at the time. Out of the river come seven fat cows, followed by seven thin cows, which then eat up the fat cows. Joseph was a, was a prisoner in Pharaoh's dungeon. He was brought up to the palace, and he was asked if he could interpret this dream for Pharaoh. Um, Joseph had a reputation as being able to interpret dreams. Joseph said the dream is about the future. You're going to have seven years of plenty, of, of, of plentiful harvests, and you're going to have seven years of famine. And the seven years of famine will consume all of the plenty that was grown in the seven years of plenty. So it's a, it's a, it's a forecast, a prophecy, which turns out to be true. So, uh, and, you know, there's a lot you can say about it in biblical terms. But for our purposes, it's an incredible sort of way of looking at the potential destruction of addiction. Addiction can be like the thin cows that eat up the plenty of the fat cows. It can it consumes whatever you've built up in your life. So we'll think about that. We'll come back to it in a minute. So let's talk about the 11th step, and then we'll try and tie it all together. The 11th step says that we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying for on, only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. So the 11th step, again, is, is a double step. There's actually two, two ideas in it. One is that we sought through prayer to have conscious contact, and that specifically we're praying for knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry it out. The 11th step is could be maybe summed up in the words, you know, keep coming back. You have to, the 11th step is a, is a piece of advice that you should keep doing this, that recovery never really stops. You should always be, or on a regular basis, whether it's once a week or once a day or whatever, trying to achieve conscious contact with God or however we understand God. And although this is a Bible related talk, we should be open. God can be a lot of things to a lot of different people. A higher power. What is our higher power's will for us and the power to, how can we get the power to carry that out? If you look at the verse, the verse is, there's a, there's a, there's a, a lot of basic life thinking in that verse. I mean, you don't have to be the king of Egypt to understand that there's going to be good times and bad times in your life, that you're going to have times of plenty and times of less than plenty, let's say. If, you're ha if you have an addiction problem, you could have the equivalent of a famine. If you're working in 11th step, you know, have prayer and meditation improve your conscious contact with God to the point where you can foresee how your life may have lean and fat times. Can you prepare yourself? You know, lean and fat times in our lives might be 
reflect to wealth, happiness, and serenity, and things like that. And sometimes it's material. I mean, I have a, a, remember an amazing share from a meeting where a, a guy was saying he was at, had had a lot of sobriety time. He'd been at become a heroin addict when he was a soldier in the Vietnam War, and he was clean for many many years, and then became addicted to cocaine. And he described how his, over the course of a year when he was using cocaine, how his whole apartment started to empty out. Like first it was the piano and then it was his electric guitar and then his books and then his this and his jewelry. It, it, the whole place just emptied out as he hocked everything to get money for drugs. And then, of course, he lost the apartment and he was living on the street. And, you know, he was lucky to be alive. But he, it, it was an amazing example of this fat times turning to lean times. And I think we we can all relate to this, and maybe we didn't have some kind of major disaster like that. But I think if we're honest with ourselves about addiction, we should see that addiction is like the fat cow, it's like the thin cow that eats the fat cow. It's a force that de depletes us of what we what's good in our lives. And so, if we can be like Joseph and interpret this and say, "What should you do about it?" Well, what the eleventh step is saying is work this step, achieve conscious contact, and sort of build up your storehouse of good recovery because you're going to need to draw on it when the bad times come. The bad times are coming. Even people working the best of programs are going to have bad times. Life is in session. Difficult things can happen. We've all seen this. We've all probably been through this. People lose jobs. People lose money marriages fall apart. There's going to be challenges to our recovery. These are the, the famine years. They, they threaten to consume what we have. Can we prepare ourselves? Can we build up? In the Joseph recommended to Pharaoh that he build storehouses, store up the fat, the grain harvested in the good years so you can feed on it in the bad years. This was Joseph's advice. It makes sense. A, a lot of us try to do this in our own lives, try and build up some savings, build up some relationships. But I think we can we can understand that addiction can rob us of abundance, you know. And so my suggestion for today is maybe try and work the 11th step, keep this verse in mind, and prepare yourself for the lean times that are inevitably heading our way. This will take conscious contact. You know, this will take praying for power. It's not easy to do. Sometimes it's a struggle to to prepare yourself for challenges. But God can give you the power to do that. That's that's in the 11th step. So those are some thoughts on the 11th step based on the Old Testament for today. If you've liked what you've heard, I would encourage you to get the workbook. It's available at the link below and at oldtestamentsobriety.com. Thank you for listening today.